Why is everyone listening to GlobalTalkRadio.com? Because it's the future of talk radio. Every day, more and more people are finding Internet Radio as not just an alternative media, but as a replacement to traditional AM and FM broadcast stations. Internet Radio offers a wider variety of programs, convenient on-demand listening that meets your schedule and fewer commercial interruptions. And GlobalTalkRadio.com is already leading the way by matching this content with a highly targeted Internet audience. GlobalTalkRadio.com offers its listeners one of the widest programming varieties on the Internet, from business and finance to self-improvement, paranormal, health, literature, romance, politics, and more. There are also opportunities for prospective hosts who would like to host their own weekly or one-time talk shows. Want to learn more? Check us out at www.globaltalkradio.com and see the future of talk radio today. You're listening to globaltalkradio.com. The following program is provided for informational purposes only. The views and opinions expressed during the show do not necessarily reflect those of the station or the host. There are no guarantees to the information presented in this material, and the claims and results of any cannot be guaranteed. As always, you should consult with a professional before making any decisions that may impact your legal, financial, or medical well-being. And now, the best of Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome. Are you ready to take a journey with me into knowledge, enlightenment, and discovery? Then let's journey again together. This is your host, Rebecca Jernigan, and you're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome, 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 welcome. You know, this is really going to be a fun show. We've had a little rocky start here tonight, and that's quite all right. But I'm here to celebrate tonight. I'm here to celebrate my 100th show. Yes, oh, that's right. that is so great. Shows. <laughs> I was hoping it might be the 100th show. Yes, yes. There's some divine intervention here with this, Rose. And let me welcome my my guest tonight, Rose, Rose Tree. She's going to be here talking with us here in just a few minutes. I've got some announcements to make. We're going to have a really fun show. This is really fun for my 100th show because she's a faith reader. She's an R reader. She's also an empath. And we're going to get into all of that discussion um, about what each and every one of those things are. We're going to talk a lot about her books and all of the um, classes and education and stuff that she does as well. But because it is a hundred show, I, I want to say, say happy anniversary to Journeys with Rebecca and thank you to the audience because without you this would not be possible. Um, you know, we have tried in the hundred shows to bring a very wide and very guest. I think we've done a really good job with that and tonight is certainly no exception. I also want to take time to thank my sponsor, Fate Magazine. And for those of you who hear me every week, go to their website, www.fatemag.com. Uh, check it out. Uh, I think they still have a special going on where they'll send you a free copy so you can try it before you buy it. And if you like it, you can get a subscription. It's been around since the 1940s, and it's better than ever. And also to Organic Health and Beauty, another one of my sponsors. And journeyswithrebecca.com on the website is always the latest updates and news and information of what's going on in Journey's world. And as, as usual, the guest that we're having on tonight is also going to be on there. We also have some new announcements, so be sure to check out uh, Journey's News. Also, the store, we have some new products in there that, for those of you might would like to see that. And in our world news, still one of my very favorite spots on my website, where we try to bring you some of the most unusual um, news items and articles and flashes and updates as they come along. Um, we, we also try to put a fun one in each and every week, and this week, again, is no exception. Um, we have uh, featured this week Phoenix Lights, uh, if, you, if you all remember and you have been with the show, Dr. Lynn Kitai was my guest. She talks specifically about the Phoenix Lights, and there is an article in there about her on the website this week and um, some other interesting things. We're also going to be doing some shows with some updates on earth changes and what's happening with that and what spiritual meaning is behind that. Uh, the next 100 shows, I'm sure, is going to be just as great as the first 100 shows, if not better. And for those of you who have just tuned in tonight, welcome, welcome, welcome. You have picked a wonderful show to uh, join us at, here at Journeys tonight. And let's get back to my guest, which is Rose, Rose Tree. And I want to formally introduce you now, Rose, and welcome to Journeys with Rebecca. I'm so delighted to be here at your 100th show, no less. Yes, isn't that just the coolest thing? I think yes. that's cool. And I have to tell you, Rose, I have to tell the audience while we're sitting here chatting for a few minutes, because we've got a few minutes left in this segment is all, or a little bit of time, um, you wrote a book called Wrinkles or God's Makeup. Now, I have to tell you, I had a birthday at the beginning of this year, and it was a, it was a rough birthday for me because I turned the big 5-0. Mm. <laughs> and when I seen that book, I just, I thought, okay, somebody's trying to tell me something because I was having an issue with this 50 thing, right? Mm-hmm. And then this book 
comes into my mailbox and it's wrinkles or God's makeup. You have no idea how tickled I was. And how joyous I was, and I just started laughing, and I thought, you know what? It is all about attitude, and it's about outlook. So just the cover of your book before I even opened it was really a very fun thing for me, and I wanted to say thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. People have such different reactions to the title of that book. I've been in places where they literally run away, and I've also been in places where they want that book more than any of the other ones that happened to me recently in England. I think well, and you know what, Rose, hang on. We'll be back. We're going to take a short break, but we'll be back and talk more about the book. Hang on. Have questions about your love life or your job? Get your private psychic reading from Rebecca. Call to schedule an appointment at 1-888-958-2768. That number again is 1-888-958-2768. You're listening to JWR Radio. Welcome back, and we're here with Rose Rose Tree talking about one of her of many of her books that she's written. Uh, again, Wrinkles Are God's Makeup, and she was you were telling us Rose about um, how, the different reactions that people have had to your book, just the title of it alone. And I think you left off with uh, uh, some some lady being upset or something about it. Oh, just that there there were some people who saw the book and would get really angry at me for even bringing up the subject. I mean, uh, we live in an era where there's a what I consider an epidemic of vanity surgery and an absence of meaning. And then there are other places, like England, where I was teaching last month, where of all my six titles, that's the one that people are the most interested in because they want to understand their journey. And, you know, as somebody who hosts a show about journeys, how often do you hear people talk about the journey that is right on the face as something that has meaning? Well, it does. Well, and you know what, when, when, when I got the book, like I said, just the title alone, just, you know, I was just tickled. I really, I can't tell you, it just uplifted my whole spirit. And then, of course, I got to the inside of it, which was a little different than what I'd expected. But it was really a, um, it was very enlightening. Uh, it was enlightening in many different ways because I have, um, viewed my, my pictures along the, you know, along the years and how my face has changed. And, you know, that's all the part of the process of life. I mean, Obviously, we come out <clears throat> as children, and our skin is very different from the time we're, you know, 20 to 30 to 40 to 50 and 70 and to 90 and on. And, you know, um, a statement that I made I make to people is that I earned every one of the gray hairs that I cover up with hair dye. <laughs> so, you know, the vanity surgery that you talk about, it is an epidemic. I mean, there's I, I watch things on TV that 16-year-old girls, their mothers are taking them into you know, into the plastic surgeon to have their nose straightened or their lips reshaped or their eyes reshaped or, you know, to make them look something totally different than, than what they were to begin with. It's and, like makeup in the new millennium. Just yeah. what makeup used to be for yeah. many people. Yeah. But if you read faces, you find out that there is a consequence for every way of altering the face surgically. And, and that's the real price to pay. It's not so much the fee that goes to the surgeon or the anesthesiologist. It's the consequences that people carry, and I'm not saying that it's always a bad thing, but I do think it's really important for someone to know what the inner consequences are before going under that knife. Well, would you share that with us? Because I would really like to know. Oh, yeah. Well, see, for at least 3,000 years, face readers have known that there's a specific relationship between each part of your face and a meaning on the inside. So for each operation, depending on what's being altered, you are changing on the inside. For example, if you're having an arched nose be straightened, what that means is that you've started off with a talent for doing very creative work, and you have traded that in for a talent where you're good at following procedures and doing things the same way each time. Well, if, you're, if you start off that way, if you shape a face that way, and it takes until you're 18 to really shape your face, if you shape your face with a straight nose, that's one thing. It's part of the context of all of your talents that you can read by looking at your jaws and your cheeks and your ears and so forth. But if you just think for popularity points to change something as significant as the shape of your nose and profile, it may not really go very well with your soul. And I think that's one reason why one of the dirty little secrets of vanity surgery is that a lot of times it just doesn't work the way it's meant to. And I think that's because sometimes people try and change things that really, those changes are so big, Rebecca, that they can go beyond a person's life contract. 
And so they just won't work. Well, you know, that makes just total sense. I mean, uh, you know, as you are sitting here talking about it, you know, I, I absolutely connect with everything that you're saying because it's like anything else. If you have a choice in the road and you take one direction, it's going to do something with you. And if you take another direction, such as a job, you know, you may find yourself in a job that you don't like. It can change or alter the personality because it either will resonate with the soul or it doesn't resonate with the soul. And so if you are cosmetically altering, which is truly a permanent thing in this case, it's different than getting a job. A job, you can always go and, you know, find something that fits better to you. But once you've altered yourself cosmetically, you've taken out the bump in your nose or you've realigned your chin or you've removed the cleft in it, that, 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 you can't get it back. I mean, it's, it's a Not unless you're Michael Jackson, and in that case, it doesn't always work out so good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's all another story there now. <laughs> but, but now that we're talking about the cosmetic, though, in the back of your book, it says, you have, you have these little bullet points. And one of them says, what's wrong with Botox and cosmetic dis- surgery? Discover the spiritual side effects. Let's talk, because we're talking about surgery, let's talk about Botox. Oh, big, yes, let's. Big, big thing going on. It's been going on for a few years, but it seems like it's even more popular than ever, even though people know what this is. <laughs> yeah, even on the level of common sense, it's a trade-off. But, you know, it, it's very human to want to be attractive and it is such a big thing in our society. Of course, it's wonderful, but yes, let's go for the perspective of face reading about Botox. Now, the first thing to understand is that all wrinkles do not have the same meaning. I belong to a health club, and they have a poster up where they're selling Botox shots, and they say, let us soothe your worry lines away, as if any line on your forehead is about worry because you're a very concerned, deep person. Not really. It depends it's like real estate, Rebecca. It's about location, location, location. <laughs> <laughs> and That's most good. of the lines that people Botox away are vertical lines. If you have a vertical line and it goes up from your right eyebrow, that line that goes up from your right eyebrow is about stored up anger related to career. If you have one that goes straight up from your left eyebrow, that's about stored up anger related to your personal life, probably your husband or your husband. Good. I, don't, I don't have either one of those. I'm looking at my face. I don't have either one of those. And then there's the one that can be there in the middle, at the bridge of the nose going upward toward the third eye. Yep. This is my favorite thing out of hundreds of things that can be on a person's face, and it's called the mark of devotion. It's about having a really profound spiritual vocation, and the Dalai Lama has it, Mother Teresa had it, Fred Rogers had it, you know, that great Presbyterian minister who had the TV show for kids. Yep. And... And so when people remove a forehead line, isn't it kind of interesting what's being removed? If you're removing something that shows that there's stored up anger, wouldn't it be more helpful to have the incentive to release the anger? You know, you're a healer. Of course we can release things like that. And until we do, we're we're saving up consequences that are more than on the skin. And then on the other hand, to remove the mark of devotion is like saying to God, well, right before I got this line, I made an agreement that I would do whatever it took to be as close to you as I could be from this life. But let's forget that. (laughs) So (laughs) there are definitely consequences beyond what the vanity surgeons tell you. And and if you have a friend or you yourself are considering surgery, whether it's Botox or something bigger, you might really want to look at Wrinkles or God's Makeup to find out what you're doing on the inside, plus the fact that most of the ways our faces change over time, that big part of your life journey, most of us miss out on the whole show. We're so full of stereotypes to explain things away or we don't even look that we miss out. My face, for instance, has changed in more than 20 ways since I was 19. And every one of those changes means something about evolution. So it's it's about the evolution of your life. And so if those Mm -hmm. lines are present and you recognize those lines, let's say as an example, you did have... The, the vertical lines going up from either one of the forehead, you know, mm-hmm. from the eyebrow. Mm-hmm. Then if a person either recognizes one of the foreheads are like that, <laughs> right? But if, if a person recognizes that as it's a physical thing, they can actually see it. There's no denying that it's on their face. They can say, you know what? Maybe that's something I do need to look at. Maybe that's something I need to be aware of. And yeah. now maybe I need to start working on that. And, or you know, if you're doing a spiritually based kind of feeling, you don't even have to work on it for a long time. Sometimes. One good prayer will do it, or one Reiki session, or I do sessions for emotional and spiritual healing. Whatever speaks to you in a deep way, it doesn't have to be 10 years like the, the model that our parents or grandparents had that 
you've had to be in psychotherapy for years and work on your issues forever. In the new age, we don't always have to take a route that is as slow as that. No, that's true. That's, and I agree with that. I agree with that 150% right there, Rose, honestly. <laughs> Let's, but, look, let's talk about how would somebody read a face like, and I you know, hate saying this, but Joan Rivers. Um, well, she doesn't have a whole lot of, I mean, when you hear her, you can hear inflections in her voice, but her face literally doesn't move. Yeah. Well, all for, the Botox and surgery she's had. Yeah. For face reading, one of the things to know about it is that it is not expression reading. It's different. It means that you look at characteristics like your prominent cheeks or your curved chin bottom or the fact that between the tip of your nose and your chin is longer than the area from your hairline to your eyebrow or your eyebrow to the tip of your nose, etc. You look at the proportions and shapes within the face. It's easy to learn to see this. That's why I wrote The Power of Face Reading and Wrinkles Are God's Makeup. So you can learn the alphabet of the face. And whatever you learn to read, you can read on anybody. So on Joan, on you, what is strong on the face, that's the most useful thing to read. But the faces do evolve, and usually they evolve because we grow inside, and then the face outpictures that. Like, I bet you know couples who've been together a long time and they've come to look alike? Yes, I think that's amazing, or animals and their owners. Yeah, well, the thing with animals is, I think, because animals take on the consciousness and the karma of their owners. That's probably a true statement. And I do know a lot of couples that start resembling themselves. I mean, you know, they come yeah. and ask for brother and sister. Yeah, or, or how about this, that identical twins wind up looking more and more different from each other over time. Yes, it's because I have, the matter of fact, one of my best friends is an identical twin, and they, her and her sister now don't look like, I mean, you can really tell the difference. I didn't used to when I first met them. And every one of those differences means something. Each bit of face, except for wrinkles, each, each bit of face data that's there is about a talent, and then it's about a challenge a life lesson or, or potential difficulty that a person may overcome. Wrinkles are a little different. Wrinkles are like badges of honor for what you've learned. And occasionally, as in the cases of a couple of those wrinkles we talked about before, they're more about problem than talent. Meanwhile, in answering that question about reading somebody who's had a lot of work, like Joan Rivers, see, faces change in two ways. One is from the inside out, but the other way is from the outside in. So if somebody does do a huge amount of eyebrow plucking, yeah, we'll be right back. For drastic surgery, it changes on the inner. Want to know what's on my coffee table? The latest issue of Fate Magazine. Hi, this is Rebecca. You know, Fate Magazine provides a one-of-a-kind reading experience. Published continuously since 1948, Fate is the only publication to consistently supply its loyal readership with a broad array of true accounts of the strange and unknown, from psychics and spiritualists to archaeological hotspots and fringe science, from authoritative UFO and paranormal investigations to readers' personal mystic experiences. Fate articles are factual, informative, and entertaining. Fate's unique mix serves the growing audience of people seeking both answers and entertainment. Find out more about Fate and to subscribe, log on to www.fatemag.com or call 1-800-728-2730. Oh, Jane, you remember the Italian place? Where we had that homemade ravioli. Oh, that was so good. And the salad with the prosciutto. Oh, and that pesto dressing oh, was out of this world. Croutons. Oh, yeah, so, so good. good. Oh, mm. Let's eat there. Where was that? I don't remember. Well, what was it called? Oh, it was so good, too. What, what was, was it called? Was it called? Oh, oh, look at this. Homemade biscotti. Let me see the ad. Ooh, and fresh pasta. <gasps> hey, let's go there instead. Out of sight, out of mind. Don't let the world forget about you. Advertise. A message from the Radio Advertising Bureau, Adweek Magazine, this radio station on the famous Radio Ranch. Hi, this is Rebecca Jernigan, host of Journeys with Rebecca. As a truly gifted psychic and clairvoyant, let me help answer your life's questions. Schedule your personal and private reading appointment with me. Call 1-888-958-2768 or log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. Where will your life's journey lead you? Check out Rebecca's website for the latest Journeys news and more. Log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. Welcome back, and we're here with Rose Rose Tree. We are talking about wrinkles or God's makeup, as well as um, that's actually face reading. Uh, we're going to get into our readings. We're going to talk about empath- empathic. Um, and, you know, this has already been so delightful. I can already tell you, Rose, that this is going to be one of those shows that, you know, two or three hours just wouldn't be enough time. 
<laughs> so it's just so much fun to have you here and to talk about things like this. You know, we we left off on the last one. We we on the last segment we talked an awful lot about you described the difference of what wrinkles were versus um, I guess the shape and and you know, the dimensions of a face and how to look at that. And I know your two books that you have on face reading. Uh, once you get the gist of it, apparently it's fairly and relatively easy. I think it's very. I honestly, for myself, even though I have intuitive abilities such as yourself and uh, and all of that. Sometimes I don't turn that on. I don't know how to explain that. I don't turn that on in every situation because I'm not in that space. I'm more in a, in a what I would call a business kind of mindset. Hey, it's I, called being sane. Yeah, it's called trying to be in this in this world, right? So, yeah, it's very I, important it's, to, it's, to it's balance really out all good. these different gifts. I, I think that's wonderful what you said. Well, I think it'd be really good for for even a person like me. I really I have studied your book, just not as much as I need to, especially after having this conversation with you tonight. And I obviously need to get your other book because there's times when I meet people and I don't get into that psychic space unless there's something really strong with them that comes through that I either need to be aware of, whether it be good, bad, or indifferent, is something that I need to be aware of. And I think that this is a a logical, in a sense, a logical science or logical art, whatever you want to call it, that would allow people to just kind of scan somebody's face and immediately be able to tell whether this is somebody they want to align themselves with. You're right. And, in fact, it depends a lot on your purpose. Like some of my clients work in sales, and they want to read the parts of the face that will tell them about how people make decisions. So that means there are certain things they look for with ears and with chins. (laughs) <laughs> and in terms of communicating with somebody effectively from the beginning, you might want to find out things about face priorities or the mouth. If you're looking at somebody as a, a possible lover, if you're looking at somebody as a friend, if you want to learn how people deal with money, there are bits of the face that you look at specifically to get that kind of information. And a lot of times it's stuff people won't tell you, so it's fun to be a face reader. Oh, gosh, not too much can be hidden then, huh? No, really not too much. And, you know, there are always people who are skeptics. And they lose out because while they're enjoying their skepticism, the face reader's finding out all this accurate information. <laughs> <laughs> I say hooray for the skeptics. <laughs> you know, good for them. Keeps the rest of us challenged, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, well you, know, besides, you know, besides being a tool, a tool that can be used in your everyday life, such as, you know, the person that's out there trying to make a living either being in sales or... Uh, maybe they're in a, in a business meeting and they're trying to make a presentation. Uh, maybe they want to go to their boss and ask for a raise, whatever the case may be. There's also another thing that we talked about during the break that I think is really important because of the times of our society. There's a lot of people doing a lot of Internet dating. And, mm-hmm. of course, people put their photos up. And anybody that's meeting somebody without a photo, I say, shame on you, even if the photo's not accurate, at least, you know, at least it's some kind of, it's some kind of a determination. Um, in your book, it says you, you say gain new perspective on liars, and especially if you date over the internet, the space reading is, is a must reading. And you can't be too careful these days. I don't mean to put fear into people, but you just don't really know who you're meeting. So if you could get a heads up while you're in there scanning and you know maybe trying to set up a date, or you're looking to, to go out on a date or to meet somebody, if you had this ability and you're able to look at them, you could determine whether you even wanted to make contact to begin with or not. And you know, no harm, no foul in that case. So it really, really is useful to, to use perception. And, you know, we could even make a distinction. You are a professional psychic, and many people who are listening may be or are becoming, and yet you don't have to have psychic abilities to do face reading. It's more like being a bird watcher. <laughs> you look at particular bits of face, and you look up what they mean, and you try it out in your feelings and see if it makes sense to you, and that's it. Sometimes people have me read faces at parties, and I... I'm there a long time. I think so far the longest has been 11 hours straight. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and before that, nine hours straight. So it's, it's sort of thing where if you had to do a really intense psychic reading, I would have been fried. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, I but would I have been fried after 11 hours. You yeah, know, but this is more like those. reading the, the box of cereal at your breakfast table. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. just, it's not, it's not that hard to do. So there are things that you look for if you're dating. Um, like, let's say you're interested in how the person deals with money. Can we talk about that? Oh, Is that absolutely. too personal? No, no, not personal at all. Because, you know, to a lot of people, in a way, that's more personal than sex. If you think about the conversations you have with your best friend, how more likely are you to talk about something with sex than how much money you earn? That's true. <laughs> it's one of the big taboo areas. And what you look for out of face, to learn about somebody's spending style and saving style, you look at the tip of the nose and the nostril. Okay. Because... 
the relative size of somebody's nose tip is about a tendency to either save money, which is a big nose tip, or to not be so concerned about saving but have more of what people sometimes call prosperity consciousness. So that's one thing. And then when you look at nostrils, of course, you don't want to stare at them too much if it's a, a live date but if, or there will yeah. be no second date. <laughs> but if you're looking at a photo on the Internet, preparing for that date, you know, you can stare at those nostrils all you want. And what you look for is this. You look for the size and then you look for the shape. Now, do you know how you tell nostril size from looking at a photograph? Go ahead. <laughs> what you, you don't need a ruler. You just If the face is on the level, what you do, Rebecca, is you see if you can tell the shape of the nostrils or not. If you can see a lot of nostril, you're talking big. If you can't, if you just surmise there must be some breathing holes in there someplace, but you don't see them on the level, then the person has small nostrils. Well, the bigger the nostrils are, the more somebody tends to be a spender. And the smaller they are, the more someone tends to be frugal when it comes to spending the money out. Excellent. Oh, my God. You will be back in just a minute. With more wrinkles for God's makeup. Hey, I'm Bonnie Raitt. Remember how excited you were as a kid to go back to school at the end of the summer? Seeing old friends, making new ones, getting new books in a new locker, a clean slate. And music class, that special room where you went to sing and perform with your friends and learn all sorts of interesting stuff about great composers and instruments and different kinds of music. We remember our music teachers because they were so passionate about helping us learn to love music. They helped spark a love for listening to notes and voices and rhythms that continues to enrich our lives even today. Know what? I bet your kids feel the same way about music class. Ask them. And make sure they get involved with music in school this year. A back-to-school PSA brought to you by MENC, the National Association for Music Education, Gibson Guitar, Baldwin Piano, and this station. Music, it wires the brain for learning. Hi, this is Rebecca. I have created Journeys into Meditation, a CD series. You know, it's a proven fact that those who meditate can create positive, permanent changes in their lives. So for those of you searching for a tool in this powerful process, you can find it on my website, journeyswithrebecca.com. Order your copy today of this positive, powerful, life-changing tool or call 1-888-958-2768. Have you heard something go bump in the night or seen little green men? Or maybe had a late-night conversation with Einstein. It doesn't matter. Paranormal, UFOs, angels, or any other strange phenomenon. Then email her at Rebecca at journeyswithrebecca.com and let us hear your stories of the strange and unusual today. Email Rebecca with your comments to mailbag at journeyswithrebecca.com. You're listening to Journeys with Rebecca. Welcome back, and I couldn't have asked for a better 100th show with my great guest, Rose Rose Tree. Now, during the break, Rose, you know, you were talking on the last segment about, you know, the, the, the nose and the nostrils. And I was telling you during the break, I was playing with my own, looking at it to see what it looked like, you know, and according to what you were saying to see what my issues or non-issues were with money. So you also told, told asked me if it was all right if you did a face reading based on the picture that's on the Internet. And I told you to go ahead. So I think now would probably be a good time for us to get into that because that's going to lead into other things. What fun. Yes, and this <laughs> does work just like an alphabet. So if you have a mirror handy and you're not driving, I'm you not can driving. check out your own face too. Um, your nose is short. You know what I mean by that? It's, well, it's not. Well, are you talking about in reference to the, the the lip? In terms of how long it is on your face. Yes. In in the context of your whole face. And it's short. Uh, what, it, you think it's short? Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. And 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 by the way, my system of face reading secrets is based on this premise. Just so you know, before we get into much more face reading, it's based on the premise. God don't make no junk. <laughs> so I you probably that. know that in other contexts. And isn't it the funniest thing that so often we don't apply that to our own faces? We oh, use I wouldn't some... have thought about that, no. Yeah, and, and it, it, it's not fair. So <laughs> when I developed my trademark system that adapts the ancient art of face reading, I did it in a way where each bit of face is about a talent, plus there's a potential challenge or life lesson that goes with it. So... Having a short nose 
is about being a hard worker. I'm talking about career type stuff, being a psychic, being a Reiki master, being an author, whatever your career is, with a short nose, you go in every day and you just work, 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 and you produce, right? That's true. And the potential challenge with this, in other words, you may have gotten it over with yet or you may not, but when people have a short nose, the challenge to overcome is being taken for granted. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's an example of face reading. And okay. um, another example is looking at the length within the face, the proportion. And this is the sort of thing that could easily change five years from now. And if you're not a face reader, you wouldn't even know. But if you compare the three lengths, one goes from your hairline to the top of your eyebrows. The second one, area two, we call it, goes from the top of your eyebrows to the lowest part of your nose. And area three, which on you I believe is the longest, Rebecca, goes from that lowest part of your nose to your chin. And by the way, in face reading, in my system, we only do the first chin. <laughs> However many chins there are, what's it going on with butts and with feet, I don't read that. People ask me to. No, thank you. <laughs> so what does it mean to have priority area one, the biggest? This is about how your personality impresses people. Face reading is about a lot more than your personality, but with this one category, it is about your personality. And what it means, Rebecca, and I can't wait to hear your feedback, but I think this is about how you come across to people being really down to earth. You are connected up with the realm of cause and effect here. That also shows in your aura, by the way, that you have a really great understanding about cause and effect right here on Earth. This goes with having a salty sense of humor and, if I may be frank, a built-in BS detector. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You're right on so far. <laughs> and, and the life lesson or potential challenge with having Area 3 be the largest is that if people wanted to sit around and talk about, about hypothetical this and theory that and wouldn't la-la-la be nice, you may be tempted to think, oh, please, could we get real? Because for you, I think when you understand something, you want to have it be real here. You don't want to just keep on talking about it after you get the point. That's true. I call that my lack of patience. Well, I'm inviting you to reframe that, darling. <laughs> See, in, in terms of face reading... It's a talent to be able to be so down to earth and real. Yeah, now, there's not too many people like that, though. A lot of people think that that's cold and indifferent because I don't, I don't, I honestly don't sit around and chit chat a lot about things like just like you're saying. So yeah, well, see, one of the, the reasons why I think it's so useful to become a face reader in this system that I write about in the Power of Face Reading, because there are other systems as well, and I don't necessarily endorse all those other ones. I don't like all the other ones, but um, anyway, when you read faces. One of the things that happens is that you smash a piece of the Maya, the illusion on earth that goes like this. Everybody is supposed to be, quote, just like me, unquote. Now, if everybody had the same face, it would make sense. But God made different faces for us, and God gave each of us a very individual soul. And when you read faces, it helps you appreciate more and more how each of us is uniquely designed, has unique things to contribute to life, wonderful strengths, and we can't be everything. So face reading helps you to be at peace with your own face and at peace with your own self. You couldn't, Rebecca, be as down to earth as you are with all the benefits that has for you as a psychic, as a friend, as a lover, etc. You couldn't have that and also be an airy-fairy person. It's just not humanly possible. That's very true, Rose. <laughs> That's very good. That's true. Oh, okay. good. good. I like it. And yeah, I like them. The challenges, you're absolutely right. But And, you know, we are mixtures. Yes, we are. Now, when it comes to experiencing how wildly different other people are from you, you know what's the best level I find for doing that? Okay. <laughs> Even more than face reading. What? Being skilled as an empath. Yes, absolutely. Now, being an empath is something most people don't even begin to understand. It, even fewer people know about being an empath you know, than know about face true. reading. That's true. That's true. And, you know, I will tell you for myself, Rose, uh, my empathic abilities is probably um, as strong as my psychic abilities. Yep. Though, though they're on, they're sim in the similar realm, they're very different. The, the whole premise behind them is very different. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in a room and I can't wrap my 
psychic awareness around a situation or if I feel too close to the situation, I can use my empathic abilities to sense what's going on with that other person in an emotional being, as you know, in the emotional sense of it. Oh my gosh, we're out of time for this segment. Hang on and we'll be right back. Oh my gosh, don't go away. At Fate Magazine, they recognize the impossible can be possible. We explore the unknown so that it can be known. From personal accounts of ghosts and UFOs to scientific examination of psychic phenomena and earth mysteries, Fate's main purpose continues to be honest reporting and open discussion of the strange and the unknown. So log on to www.fatemag.com or call 1-800-728-2730. Close your eyes for a moment. And imagine you're away from it all on a remote, unspoiled beach somewhere. Take a deep breath and enjoy the warm sea air. Sunlight streams through the palm trees as gulls call out from above. A real paradise like this isn't easy to come by, but it does still exist. And with your help, places like this one can last forever. You see, the Nature Conservancy works locally with communities, businesses, and people like you to preserve the most precious natural places around the world. They protect the animals that live there, the plants that grow there, and even the water. That way, this beautiful place will be beautiful forever. And we'll make sure that closing your eyes will never be the only way to get there. I'm Paul Newman. Help the Nature Conservancy save the last great places. Visit the Nature Conservancy at nature.org. That's nature.org. Talk with an intuitive touch. Journeys with Rebecca. Oh, welcome back. Welcome back. This hour is going by just, just way too quickly. And, Rose, before we get into the rest of the conversation, let's go ahead and give out your website address, how people can get a hold of you. Um, I'm sitting here looking at your website right now with um, all of the different books that you have come out with, um, besides the one that we were talking about tonight, which is Wrinkles are God's Makeup, How You Can Find the Meaning in Your Evolving Face, um, as well as all the rest of them. So if you'd like to share that information real quick, we're going we're gonna to continue on with our conversation, but I want to make sure everybody knows how to get a hold of these invaluable well, the tools. Yes, but the website is rose-rosetree.com, and there's also a toll-free number you can call for ordering books or different kinds of sessions and readings that I make available, and that number is 800-345-6665, 800-345-6665. And then finally, there is a free zine, an internet magazine I send out once a month with face readings and aura readings of people in the news. And if you would like to get that, just send over an email, and it will be my delight to send it to you for as long as you want. You will never get spam. There really are no strings attached to it. It's just the way that I get to give to everybody who would like to receive it. And you would you can get to it at the website rose-rosetree.com or you can just email to rosetree at starpower.net. And, of course, as we do with all of the guests, her link will remain live on my website until she asks me to take it off. So for those of you who didn't have a piece of paper and pencil of handy, you can go to the website, go into, she'll be up for a few more days on the website, go click her link, or you can always go into the past guest link, and she will be under Rose, Rose Tree, and it will be there at journeyswithrebecca.com. Thank now, you. Now, let's talk a little bit about empaths because we didn't get into a whole lot of that. Um, one of the things that I shared with you during the break was the fact of, well, actually I'm getting ahead of myself, <laughs> empathy. It's a, um, let's talk a little bit about that, and then we're going to move into the oral reading, because I think that's very important. Okay, well, I, I was so tickled when you described it with you, because I did read your aura from your photo before the show, and one of the notes I made was, one, very, very strong empathic ability, for what I call emotional oneness. This is one of about six gifts that are fairly common. Any one of them will enable you to directly experience what it's like to be another person. And empathic gifts are not only emotional like this one that you have that's so strong. They can be about physical experiences that people have. They can be intellectual. They can be spiritual. They can be environmental. Now, whatever kind of gift you have as an empath, if you have it, one thing to understand is that you're still in the minority. In America, it's about one out of 20 people 
who has even one significant trainable gift as an empath. Now, in Japan, where I've started to teach and where they're publishing a translated edition of my book, Empowered by Empathy, there it's more like one in five people. The second thing that's really important to understand about being set up as an empath in life is that until you are not just talented but actually skilled at it, you tend your whole life to pick up pain that belongs to other people. Whether it's a physical gift or a spiritual gift or whatever, you're still picking up pain that belongs to other people until you learn to use your gift with skill. And that is something I would love to teach you. And I can, either through Empowered by Empathy or with a phone session. And this is probably the most life-changing, uh, ahead-of-its-time thing that I've been able to bring out in my career. Over I, the and last you know what? I am going to just throw my hat up in the air for you uh, <laughs> in regards to that. And I will tell you why. is because one of the things that... I, as an empath myself, that uh-huh. I had problems with was, was, was carrying around other people's issues. Yeah. What helped me to overcome that, which was a, quite a lengthy process compared to what I'm sure that you have the ability to offer people, is I used my Reiki because mm-hmm. I can now channel through that and let it flow from me. And mm-hmm. I, I can sense it, feel it, it's there, I understand it, I connect with it, but I no longer own it as my own. Because that can bring on symptoms and sicknesses and illnesses for the people that are connecting and they don't know how to let go of it or, you know, they get very emotionally attached uh, to those feelings or sensations, whatever that, whatever the situation comes from. So kudos to you to teach people how to not only get to that sensory perception, but also to learn how not to carry around what does not belong to them. That's cool. Thank that's you. I that's to, really cool. I, I appreciate what you've described, and that, that sounds like something that would be good for everyone who learns Reiki to, to learn. Yes. That's a very important piece of it. Because oh, even though the it's energy it's that you bring through when you do Reiki is not yours and it's not draining for that reason. Right. Unless you're skilled, if you're an empath, you may well be taking on a lot of the other person's karma or pain and it's really not required of you and you'll do better if you don't. Exactly. So I throw my hat toward you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll just wear each other's hat for a while. That's cool with me. <laughs> So what other interesting things did you see in my aura besides the empathic? Oh, um, let's see. Root chakra grounded. your just an electrical transformer. You work a lot with earth energy. Second chakra, lots of soft feminine energies there. This is the only part of your aura where there's a chunk of pain that's stuck in there. I uh-huh. think some old heartbreaks haven't been overcome yet. That's true. Um, that's at true. your third chakra, uh, powerful. You don't take any <clears throat> from anybody. That's true. And with your intellect, which I also like to read it, that solar plexus chakra, you're always thinking one step ahead of people. And you have this very lovely gift for understanding cause and effect better than most people you'll meet on the planet. You know what I mean? Yes, I do. And thank you for that. Um, at the heart chakra, you move quickly through challenges of the heart. It, it goes beyond courage. You're an adventurer. You just, you'll just go right straight for it. No wonder you're not scared to do live radio. <laughs> Not at all. Oh, my God, we're out of time. Oh, it's just so great. Thank you so much for being here. Find out more about a show topic or guest. Log on to www.journeyswithrebecca.com. I'd like to thank my guests tonight for sharing their wonderful information and knowledge with us. And a special thanks goes out to you, the listeners. Now, you know, the guests I have on air are given the opportunity to share their viewpoints or ideas. Now, you and I have the opportunity of choice in regards to those ideas or viewpoints. Be sure to check in next week for more enlightening educational talk and discoveries. This is Rebecca of Journeys with Rebecca. Until we meet again, where will your life's journey take you? Many blessings and good night.